and then we're going to come back to Leviticus. So every seven years is a year of release. Okay, what does that involve? Well, it involves two things. One is, this is the manner of the release. Every lender shall release his money. Yahweh's release being proclaimed. So, so if you owe someone money, yeah, it's not forgiven anymore. Yeah, wow. yeah. So a debt release from debt obligations. Don't sign a thirty-year loan. Don't sign thirty-year So it is. It's a complete. 
completely different socioeconomic situation than most modern economies today. So you can't, I, I don't think you can just drop these immediately into a modern context. I think you have to really understand the principles at work. But uh, it's recovering an ideal. Yeah. In the same way, there's something about uh, the way that we work during six days, <laughs> six days of work, and the way that we treat land that isn't ideal either. Yeah. That we need to we need a break from, mm. and the, the land needs a break from us. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We need a break from ourselves too. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 The daily grind. And then really produces non-ideal situations where a bad year of rain or something, bad crop, can't pay off my obligations for this year. And all of a sudden, you know, through uh, nobody's fault, I might have to sell some of my children, sell myself. Or somebody wrongs another person. You know, somebody moves their neighbor's boundary marker. You know, they care a lot about the boundary markers in the yeah. Old Testament. Right. Because that's like... Yeah. How you know? Yeah. And, well, then your land is how you, how you provide for your family. Right. So you steal like a 10 by 10 square. <laughs> so it's my like farming field. Kind of keep shifting it over. Yeah, stuff like that. So people steal and all, all that. Yeah. And so every seven years, you just reset to the email. Life inevitably produces these inequities that need to be reset. So, so in an ideal, not only are you not only slaves, that makes sense. Not only dead, that makes sense. Mm. But you're not working and you're not planting anything. Mm -hmm. and that just kind of seems like, mm. what are we going to do? Is it sit around? <laughs> Retour. <laughs> Play Monopoly Go. <laughs>
reinforcing the fact that the creator of life has come into your mess and death and corruption can't be in this mess. And God wants to change us into people who are free of death and corruption. That's the clarity. Well, the last section of Leviticus in the 20s is you get the ritual calendar gets explored. And this is specifically Leviticus chapters 23, 24, 25, 26. We're going to just do an overview here. And the, uh, you know, these aren't thrilling for most people to read, but once you ponder what's going on here, this is, this is electric stuff, man. This is cool. Leviticus 23. You ready? Okay. Yahweh spoke again to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, Yahweh's appointed times that you shall proclaim as holy meeting times. Well, convocations, which is a funny word we don't really use. Holy convocations. Sacred assemblies. Oh, okay. that's a little better. Sacred assemblies. Yeah. These are my appointed times. Uh, that word appointed times uh, appears on page one of Genesis. Remember? Day four. Day four. Yes. God says, I will uh, give the sun, moon, and the stars for signs and for appointed times. And, and here, here's the list of the seven appointed times in Leviticus 23. Cool. Yep. So uh, the first appointed time is Sabbath. Yeah. For six days, work may be done. On the seventh day, there's a complete Shabbat. It actually repeats the word Sabbath twice. Uh, uh, Sabbath, Sabbath? Yeah, it's Shabbat Shabbaton. Huh. Yeah. That's lost in the translation. Well, what, what do you got here? In Sabbath, Sabbath rest. Oh, a day of Sabbath rest. Well, there you go. Shabbat Six appointed times. Appointed times. In 